Right. In this video, I am going to be uh, taking a look at uh, Pocket Music for the uh, Game Boy Advance and uh, Korg DS10 for the uh, Nintendo DS system. Right, so uh, here I have the uh, Game Boy Advance Pocket Music cartridge for the uh, oops. Stop that. Uh, Game Boy Advance Classic and the Game Boy Advance SP, which will also work on the Nintendo DS. And I need to no DS Lite. However, there's one significant problem, and I will try to demonstrate it whilst this camera's on the stand. Because there's a reason for that. It is on the stand, and it's to get around this very problem or anything else. Which I'm not even sure will work. And that is, disappointingly. It's very difficult to take this seriously as a music program for portable use, especially compared to the other one that I'm going to show you in a moment or two time, as it, it just simply is not very loud. Even if you connect it to an Nintendo DS and then connect a Bluetooth speaker, it just seems to be such a lack. Of uh, volume, and I know that this is a complete lie. The way this game runs, there is lots. There is, as you can see, it's there, and it's just not particularly loud. There is lots of older games that are very loud on the Game Boy Advance, which I'll quickly show you in a minute. Why wow, this is so quiet, I just don't understand it. Let's quickly play a snippet of this track. There's one that I made up. I don't... On my camcorder's volume meter, is barely registering it. Disappointingly quiet, that. Now take that and compare it to something like, I don't know. Uh, oh, one that I know that is... I don't know why I have that. Uh, <coughs> Let me compare that to Yu-Gi-Oh, for example. Another game that I hardly ever play when I do it, it's just for a couple of hours. You know, or even just like half an hour, it just depends. That is considerably louder. And there's a lot more volume going off there. So, you know, there's definitely already some kind of predisposed problem right from the get go annoyingly so uh, yeah that's never a good thing so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to switch the uh, TV on and yes it actually does take this on in real life to switch on try and avoid getting a copyright strike what I'm about changing the channel. It does actually have one AV scart though. It's an Alba television. And uh, yeah, so that says a lot of really. it. You wonder how I'm going to do this. I'm going to be using uh, the Game Boy player connected to a Nintendo GameCube. Um, Just 
been filtered and shot. I'm going to be using the GameCube. I know that this trap is so hard to use. I've lost the handle with you know, it's too well to use it now. I think, I mean, I think they're going to it. So you're going to be using that GameCube. Which, as you can see, is already halfway maxed out. It's got two controls and two memory cards, and it's already getting loaded in there. Which is pack man. So I'm going to load this into the Game Boy Player, and uh, we're going to use it. There is actually a special ejection mechanism on the Game Boy Player for ejecting Game Boy Advance titles specifically. It's not so much needed. It's not so much needed. If all you're ever planning to do is Play Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, but for Game Boy Advance titles, yeah, different story. You might still want it. I hardly ever get the tripod out, but when I do, it's usually because I need a good steady shot. Really, the last video where I covered React the West, I was a bit pissed off. To say the least, I could have easily. got the tripod out, if, had I known where it was then I could have got a much clearer and steadier shot. There is some, I, th I think that there is some image stabilisation on here but at times it has me wondering because it does tend to go in, out of, go in and out of focus quite a bit annoyingly, so uh, yeah. So we're not really going to cover anything about the Game Boy Player, there's not much of a need to. If I ever do cover that, it will be in another video, and even then, I will be treading carefully because there's so much to be said on that, and so much copyright strikes I could get. It's not worth it, really. So even if I do, it's not going to be like the easiest thing to talk about anyway, because a lot of games, a lot of the soundtracks on the games are still copyrighted. They'll be copyrighted for 70 years almost to the end of this century in the case of a lot of the Game Boy Advance so. and if we ever did make a, a new line of Game Boy stuff then that would probably extend the copyright on a lot of things even further than that so, uh, As you can see, this should be the optimum way to, to really utilise any cartridge that actually struggles to run on the uh, Game Boy or Game Boy Advance Classic or the Game Boy Color or the Game Boy Pocket or the original Game Boy. Or even the cartridge that would struggle to run on, let's say, or are just simply impossible to run on, and let's just say the Game Boy Micro or the Confen Game Boy. But you can even hear it. You can even hear it now. I've heard this song. There's some good songs. No matter now. And that is muffled as well. That is very muffled. Very muffled and not the clearest in my own opinion as it is. Annoyingly the, the DS part of this video probably is going to be a bit more harder to do. But you know. 
This is the easy bit, really. So here's a song I made the other day. This was actually quite an interesting find. It was six pound on eBay, and it wasn't the intentional purchase, but I, I did see it and I thought to myself, for six quid, I might as well just get a copy of that and see what it sounds like. I'll only let you'll quickly find it a little bit. It's a bit of a disappointing thing. It's better than LSDJ, yeah, definitely. More usable than LSDJ, quicker to lay tracks down, yeah, very stretchy imagination. Can you write melodies as well? The answer is yeah. Yeah, you can actually. Monophonic, single note melodies can be composed within this sort of software for the Game Boy Advance. That's one that I've just written there, it's not even finished. But it's not that great otherwise. An oily seems to consist of... <coughs> I didn't want to do that. It seems to consist of a... Uh, cut, copy and paste type of system. More than anything else. It's where a lot of the action seems to happen in this program. That and the piano roll, which is very blatantly difficult to get to. <laughs> because instead of it being something that you double tap A on and just it takes you into the piano roll, as one might think, which would probably be the optimum way of doing it to be honest. You actually have to hold down the A button to get to the piano roll to actually edit things. <laughs> Some of you may be arguing and you may well be saying, but Ryan, Pokemon Gold, the sound like it was really good, but it did sound a bit weak and underpowered at times and not as good as it could have been. How can the same sort of sound be coming out of the exact same console just by simply swapping out to a new cartridge? Well, that is where the... Uh, yeah, it is a newer cartridge, but it, bear in mind that the Game Boy Advance cartridge, as I've already clearly said in a previous video, <clears throat> I've got a bit of a sore throat. The Game Boy Advance cartridge is half the size of the Game Boy Color cartridge. Can store at least ten times, if not a hundred times as much as a Game Boy Color cartridge. And offers faster memory access. And operates very differently, despite being used in the exact same console. Without a shadow of a doubt, for anyone who's doing computers as a subject at school, or, or even just game development, or anything like that, the Game Boy Advance is probably the most interesting and uh, hard to explain console that could have ever been released, really. When it is in Game Boy Color, on Game Boy mode, it is actually, you know, like when it was just playing Yu-Gi-Oh! on the Game Boy Advance Classic, which is that one. Let's see, I can hardly get into here. Um, it was just using the Z80 processor. And uh, these caches, as you can clearly see, they're massive, but they're, e they're easier to keep hold of. But you can still get lost if you're not thinking about where you're placing them. Um, the Z80 processor runs up to a maximum speed of 8 MHz, and it can also run anything below 8 MHz, as one would expect. 
I saw that I'm aware of the Game Boy is just like a computer for the vast part. And most other consoles where it's not running at a fixed speed. You know. <coughs> it will run at any old speed as appropriate. Whether be that whether that be a fixed or variable speed. <coughs> so yeah. So if you press the L button on the uh, controller, which is that one there, is also on the Game Boy Advance as well, and the SP. Annoyingly so, one reason why I play the SP is because the buttons are too small for the L and R buttons, they shrunk down quite a lot. You get this menu and you get these options, so you get Rift Library, Rift Palette, Select Area, Cut Area, Copy Area, Paste Area, and Escape. And it, you know, that this piece is escape track editor. So escape almost goes on that same convention as on the computer. You know, you, you hit that, it, it backs you out of the, of the riff editor, which is where we are now. And it takes you back to the main menu of the Pocket Music program. So what we want is select area. Then we press A. Then we stretch it out. We're going to use four squares for each section or segment much in the same way that you do this sort of work in Cubase or Logic this is how you would do it on Pocket Music I could stretch it out to an 8 bar loop Well, you know, I think it's a bit, it's pushing it. Steaming as a Game Boy Advance classic is only able to handle so much stuff anyway. If you actually want to be evil, and I will show this in a moment, there's only so much that you can handle and it will become apparent quite shortly. So you want to choose a riff now. We want to just put something in to begin with. Any, anything, really. Strictly speaking, no matter how you make music, let's just have an unusual start. Let's start with some hi hats. Let's just. You can see it doesn't always stretch things out because this isn't a loop, it's not going to stretch it out. There clearly is some problems with this sort of way of making music. And it's not the actual environment so much. But it's the, the hardware that's actually responsible for handling it. And it's only able to do about I'd say roughly about 180 bars, 181 bars. As you can see the last section begins at bar number 177 and then after that you've got three more squares so, so th on this particular bar which is the end of this section of 173 the last bit would be bar 176 and then the, the, the box after that would be num the beginning of 177 and if you're working in bars of four, that means that for every four bars, one box signifies one bar. So one, two, three, four. Within these, you can have up to 16 crotchet notes or 16th notes. So there is some flexibility at least. It's actually better than the Korg DS, technically, in terms of capacity. 
in that regard you'll find that there's a bit of a spoiler the Korg DS is more exciting but can do a lot less despite being run on considerably more modern and faster processing hardware and just uh, with higher amounts of memory it's very disappointing but it's really just how it is one would have thought that Nintendo DS would have maybe done a lot more but maybe I'm just being over the expectant of that so yeah but it's not always as it should be whatever. let's just select the area again let's put four of them let's put something else in Got any more loops? It's actually very fast as well. Not as quick as the touch screen, but you know, quick enough for really. everyone. It's disappointing because as far as I'm aware at least there isn't a mixing thing either. So the rift palette, as you sort of might have suspected, I haven't used this a great deal, so I'm still learning on the fly a little bit. It's like it's everything you've already got loaded into the feed that basically That it's going to allow you to uh, utilize basically. As you can see, it lets you load quite a lot into the power. More than I was expected. I was thinking I'm going to let you load six things in, but it's actually going to let you do a lot more than six. Well, exactly. This is exactly what I'm going on about. They really exhausted the ideas with this one. They really push the boat out with the amount of stuff that you could actually put into memory this this is not the case on the Nintendo DS music program that I'm going to show you quite soon probably in the next half hour or so if not less than that um, then we're just going to put something else in because why not, we need something that's a bit more musical right? And as you can see, it's not too hard to get creative, really. Definitely, I think this is a cartridge that you could carry around with you. And use. Wait, we're going to have to extend that first. And use as a full... Bloated portable digital audio workstation. There's really no reason why you cannot use it in the, in this sort of way. Same with the other one, except it's more limited. But this is the very idea with these is that when you haven't got access to a computer or when you haven't got access to a full recorded studio you just simply switch on some program on a portable device and you get to work making music on there the fact that it's on the Game Boy Advance it really does do it some justice as well.
if it means that anyone who's going to really try and mess about with it, it's not going to be able to because you're going to need the console to actually bloody play the damn thing anyway. As it goes, the Game Boy Advance only sold 1 billion units, so that still means there's about 6 billion people who haven't got a Game Boy Advance. Although that probably has changed today. And there's a lot of emerging clone hardware that can still play the Game Boy Advance stuff. A lot of the clones, you know, those are only add to the numbers of all. You can imagine, it is one of the most popular consoles of its, of even the present day. There's no reason to not have one, even if it's just something that you're only going to play every now and then. You know, it proves itself to be invaluable. As a uh, programming tool, and uh, also as a professional tool that actually could be used for work. And furthermore, it still maintains its ability to play games 100% just about all of the time. With no compromises. Often more than not. Well, that's to deliberately start modifying the hardware of the Game Boy. There's absolutely no reason why, why you can't write a fully functional program for the Game Boy Bank that does what you want it to do. We aren't the need of modifying the console itself. Well, you know, when you start <coughs> modifying the hardware, then you're going to start having problems. That's all I can say on it, really. Now it's not as easy to operate as I'd like it to be. And there is cut copy in case, so I'm not using it, I can't be bothered with it. I think this way it's just faster. Why is in Cubo so about adopting something a, a little bit different to cut copy and paste? This I think is just easy if you just just compose it manually all the way through. You also find that, that is the case with Korg DS10 software as well. It's easier to compose and manual than it is to cut, copy and paste. There's also another difference in workflow with the DS10, and that is it will not let you play it as a full song. This one does. Horrible! But I don't know why they've done it, but there's got to be a reason for it. Now I'm going to use copy and paste just because I can. See if it actually does work. Well, that didn't work, did it? Try that again. Ah, see, right, so you can use select area. So 
so that signals that. Well, that was fucking useless. I don't like this. This is a bit clumsy. This interface. No, I should just go to the bang. Bang. Ah, right. Now I'm getting the hang of it. It's not as bad as I think it is, this interface. I think it's just me just making some mistakes. It would have been nice if you didn't have to rely on the L button. So I think that's a bit annoying. What are that? I think I'm just going to do it the other way now because I'm going to get it. That is quite. But constantly quicker, but still. I want that one to it. I mean, I have no um, objections to modding a game more advanced. Just don't, if you're going to do it, do it sparingly. Don't destroy a million Game Boy Advances just for the sake of modding it. You know, remember and just bear in mind that there's someone out there that probably wants to buy the Game Boy Advance. And for everyone that is modded for the sake of experimentation, that's one, that's potentially one last that someone is not going to have. We are certainty, of course. If you, if it's easy to mod a cloned console, then that's probably the better thing to do. Just like the Amiga, the Game Boy Advance is, it's stacking on years. It's getting old. You know, it's piling on some years. It's becoming ancient in its own right. It's becoming like the grandfather of portable gaming. To, to a lot of people, particularly newer generations, it, it probably seemed miles away from what they're playing games on now. It probably seems like something of interest that they might even buy for some newer generations. But it's, it also seemed quite old to some newer generations of people. Undeniably. I think that last one's a mixing shot, but it's a few times. I think I've had enough of this. So you can see the sort of workflow, and you'll see quite quickly the other cartridges, despite it being a bit limited in an amount of number of bars of music it can make, it is considerably faster. So let's just listen to this for now, and we'll have a look at the other one. So there you go, and I've just got distracted a little bit there, but uh, that is how that works basically. I haven't shown a riff 
why the piano on whatever it's called. But um, if you do actually want to look at this properly, then, you know, by all means you can probably get it cheap off the range. Try and get one with a manual or in box. Might cost a bit more in box, but I think it's good, but the sound quality is not optimal. So, you know, you're not missing out on much if you don't get this. You know, and there's always an LSDJ, which is very hard to use. And then there's Nano Loop, which is even harder to use, almost to the point where it feels useless. Nano Loop is actually, to me, very disappointing. So, uh, yeah. It really is up to you, as to uh, I get this thing off of there. Ask the viewer as to whether they actually go down this route of getting the Game Boy Advance music out of it. Arguably, when there's much newer music programs coming out for the Switch and the uh, Nintendo DS and the Nintendo 3DS. The answer is, you may, well, uh, benefit from using them, if not the ones on the Game Boy Advance. Called DS101, I've got a lot of praise to it. <coughs> it looks like this, and the box basically has this Korg logo on it, and it's, you know, it's pretty awesome. Probably the best place to get it is Amazon or some place like that or eBay for that matter. Considerably more expensive, this one is it's probably like 30 quid. I'm being a bit lazy, I could have said that sentence in full, but I'm just being lazy. Um, I'm gonna need sound switch for this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the only going to go and switch. I'm just going to get the pan out of the back. I know you're going to get out, you've probably seen a few bits on them, but I'm not going to edit this a great deal. Probably I'll edit this video a little bit. Just let them bits start in there. What other than that, that'll be about it. Um, as you can see, yeah. the screen visibility hasn't improved tremendously from the Game Boy Advance to the Nintendo DS. Annoyingly. But it is just how it is. So, all we do is just click. You don't actually. You don't actually uh, start off with a fresh track, you just load one of the pre-existing ones up in your edit part. So you're just going to load up, uh, let's not load up song 2 because I think there's something on there. Let's do song 3. And as you can see it's very, very Limited. Where is the Game Boy Advance version, which is still running at the minute? I probably want switching off at some point. Although I may play it later tonight. I don't know yet. Gives you lots of loops. This one, you know, lots of samples as opposed to instruments. This one does it a different way. It gives you two instruments. I think it, this is based off of the MS-10 instrument, but they've cleverly renamed it DS-10. Quick background is MS-20 is like a synthesizer that was brought out in 78, and I think the one before the MS-10 was brought out a bit before that.
This is a monophonic sort of synthesizer. The audio workstation package for the uh, Nintendo DS. So you only really can do single notes type of melodies again on it. The other one again, you know, it has got piano only. It must be some kind of instrument stuff going off in there because it does let you do it. But again, the, it's only single notes that you can compose. To actually move around, it's not as clear as it ought to have been. I just press this two arrows button. It looks like an up arrow and a down arrow next to each other. Then you can select the options that you want. We want the uh, synth sequencer for the first synthesizer. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put something in. So you can see I think my pen's already gone out of calibration, that's the other problem with these touchscreen programs is not seem to stay in calibration very well at all. Well, you don't press R to play, you press play now. And as you can hear it's pretty good. It allows this is on full volume, but you can just turn it up and down. Well, lo and behold, if you really want to record it onto something or play it through a decent set of speakers or even send it out to a mixer, you've got the option, at least. You've got a port to do it. Instead of being completely deprived on it, like on the Game Boy Advance SP, you have got the headphones on here. So you can see you've got the chaos later as well. You can see why artists like Giorgio Moroder may have been, well, initially being compelled and inspired to use a synthesizer. For anyone who doesn't really have much musical knowledge or very little experience in music, or who can play the piano but has zero knowledge on musical synthesis, just might make a good little starting block. Because you haven't got to buy a full synthesizer if you have to buy this cartridge. It gives you a restricted experience, yeah, definitely. But it gives you a taste of what you could be doing if you were to buy a full synthesizer, you were to buy a full drum machine, or a full uh, digital audio workstation package for a computer, or a full piano digital audio workstation type. 88 key synthesizer instrument. So, you know, it definitely gives you a taste of what you could be doing. And not just. It's not just being a toy base, sort of. So as you can see, we need to demonstrate something now. That's that. The drums are laid down. It's going to leave them off here. And here's the patterns. You've got pattern 1, pattern 2, 3, all the way through to pattern 16. So you can go to pattern 2, for example, it's blank. You know, got some drums here again, so we can put new stuff in. So I'm to calibrate the skin.
Uh, you can see it's interesting. It's good enough if, even for a professional musician, this, this is good enough. If they find themselves deprived from the computer or just away from the computer a lot, due to work constraints or due to having a job elsewhere, you know, this is one way to just at least be able to achieve some kind of productivity when the computer is simply not within reach. The sad truth is a lot of musicians will be working and doing a job that they don't want to do. And chances are they'll be doing another job that they have to do. Probably they won't even be allowed to use this one at work. But you know, even for just times when they haven't got the computer or so they've got a spare moment, this is just something that's worth having more than that one. You can see the fucking all the DS is like this all clumsy to shine on your lap. Don't seem to fall down. Yeah, and it's susceptible to getting broken just because of shit like that. They always fall off. Much like the game boys. You can't just rest it on your lap. As, as it would be nice to it, so, especially with the way that the screen just set up. I think mean, when they did the DS, I think they had the idea that people would have this on a table when they use it at times. And it very is much possible to do that. But as times have changed, you know, people don't often have the smartphone or the tablet or the games console, you know, the portable games console or a table in every case. Today I'm just adding some of your consoles. Um, it's tightly decreed and it's the string. It's all to know it's all in the This oscillator sink, the VCO sink. Which doesn't, in my opinion, it's that is not the best thing to have it is even on the real synthesizer. But sometimes it's just scripted. Very quick and easy going there. It's just to show the chaos the way to an action. Okay, you can record from pretty much the last end of the chaos the way to. Um, the, uh, the sequence uh, and it also changes the offices as well. Just you can also change the currently loaded patch if you would like to do that. You can see a lot of choices. Yeah, I'm just going to finish this video. Okay, sorry, I'm in the video. Oh 
only fell on last two links to it. Alright, so, uh, yeah. As you can see, that's our poor DF10 links. Um, I'm going to finish the video here. I've got some stuff to do, and I've yet to have some to do. And, uh, I know you mean, you know, the savage is just going to show up to end it down tonight. Uh, that bit of crap, man. Okay, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, let me know what you think of portable music production, if it's any good or not.